Welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, February 6th, 2020. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Planning board members present tonight, we have Sean Winston, Frank Underwood is not here tonight. We have the vice chair, Nicole Fecto. We also have regular member, Mike LaRue, and alternate Dave Ross Lyons. So David, you'll be voting tonight. We also have our town planner here and members of the public. Moving on to public comment session is open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that relates to the planning board. We do have a public hearing tonight on a uh, zoning request or rezoning request, but if you uh, please feel free to come forward to um, talk about anything that relates to the planning board, public comment session is open. We will have another one at the end of the meeting, so if you have any other comments after this meeting, you can get up and talk now. Okay. 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 My name is Priscilla Duby. I live at uh, 21 Sullivan Street, and I abut Dana Cotton's property. Um, my understanding is that he has um, approached you to extend the line that ends at before his property, which is commercial, to include him, which he is an R1. So basically, you're looking to extend commercial property into the R1 district, and I don't think um, I think that's called, I don't believe anybody else in the R1 has approached you to do that. Am I correct? Is he the only one? This, this go around, correct. So is that called spot zoning? No. Why not? Because his directly abutting his property, that is the, that ends that village overlay. And the way that the village overlay is set up that if you directly abut the village overlay, you can opt into the village overlay. If you're two houses down, three houses down, you can't. And there's a town, it has to go to town vote also. It, well, I'm it sorry, I'm a bit to, hard of hearing. It has to go to a town vote. So if he's approved through the planning board, the whole town still has to vote on it. So there, but that is the, okay. how the rules go. For but this. I just wanted to voice my concerns um, where our two properties abut each other and his back section is open to our back section. And I'm concerned about my privacy because if you do approve it, and I don't know what his plans are, but that's not the point. Um, the point is that I want my privacy protected. And I know that the overlay that you're talking about, um, it should be uh, compatible to the area that you are talking about. And if everybody else is R1, I don't understand why you can take one house, even though he butts it, and make it commercial. But those are my concerns. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And I'd like to be noted for the privacy. If it, you know, if it goes forward, I'd like that. Well, know. if it does go forward, he can't do anything to the property. If he's going to, if he's going to decide that he wants to put, I, yeah, I some understand. Different, he's going to have to come back in here, and then we would address those concerns then. But see, the problem is, is if you do approve him, and he decides to have McDonald's move next door to me, mm -hmm. that would be a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It <laughs> thank would. you. Anybody else for public comment session? It's public comment session. Right, you're yeah. you're yes, yes, free to. Uh, no, I'm not planning on doing. Can you just say, say, state your name for our oh, viewers yeah, at home? Berwick, Maine. I have okay. her property. Uh, no, ma'am. I'm not looking to do anything with the property other than just change the designation. And what's um, the reason? To all right. We're, we, this is public comment session, and the, oh, the comments have to come directly to okay, the board. Sorry about During that, the public not, hearing, uh, it could be a little bit different. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Not uh, too much of the drama that you hear. Um, like I'm saying, I'm not looking to take and do anything right now with the property. Um, just looking at some point down the road, if I'd be able to take and perhaps make, have that op option for the property down the road. So that's where I'm at right now. As long as I'm not th I'm there, I'm not really going to do anything with it. I've spent all these years. So it's been a great neighbor, so I, I can appreciate what you're saying. No McDonald's, right? <laughs> 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 I am. Uh, <laughs> So yes, that's that's. Uh, anybody have any concerns that would like to address? No, no this is not the time. That's during okay. public hearing okay. Okay, for I'm your sorry. application. Yeah. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions for me? 
That's yeah, that's for the public hearing and, and okay. when we discuss your application. All right. All right. This well, is just public comment. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Going once, going twice. All right. We'll close the public comment. The next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for January 16th, 2020. <clears throat> I think they looked pretty good. Yeah. James. Thank you. <laughs> Frank pointed out one typo ahead of time, so I, I got did. ahead of it. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> nice work. And that was in the first that was in the that was on the first page, right? Yep. Gone to so what was that change again? It's already been made. Okay. Yep. All right. Five units, right, okay. All right, so we're looking for a motion for the approval of the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded, further discussion? All in favor? All opposed, all abstaining? Okay. Next on the agenda is a public hearing for, it's a rezoning request at 20 Rochester Street. Uh, it's map U4, <coughs> lot 87. It's going from the R1 to the CI and Village Overlay District. The applicant is Mr. Dana Cotton. This is a public hearing just on this application only. If you have any concerns, any questions, um, please feel free to come forward, ask those questions, and voice those concerns, and we'll write them down. And then next, in old business, we'll be talking about the application. So public hearing is now open. Sure. <coughs> In terms of moving, I understand. If you could just state your name for the my record. My name is Patty Mowat. I live at 21 Sullivan Street. I understand that Mr. Cotton's property abuts the village overlay and that it's just extending it to include all of his property. If you move that boundary for one property, do you have to move the boundary unilaterally? Can you just make it go swoop around? His lot, lot 87, would be... I understand, in the village but overlay, you can just adjust the boundary of that overlay for one thing, or do you have to move the entire edge to no, just one the, that footage? Okay, that was the question I okay. had: is whether that was yes. Anybody else for the public hearing? All right, nobody else. All right, we'll close the public hearing. Next on the agenda is Old Business Rezoning Request, 20 Rochester Street. It's map U4, lot 87, going from the R1 to the CI and Village Overlay District. The uh, request came from Mr. Dana Cotton. I'll turn it over to James. So there's one, one note on uh, Mr. Cotton's property. <laughs> is There actually already is a sliver of Dana's property that is in the village overlay in commercial industrial. Um, it's just a relic of our old zoning map that uh, just didn't carry over, and at the time he didn't opt in. Um, so uh, I don't see a reason not to allow it, and I think the concern is for, for privacy. And if, say, they wanted to add a unit of residential, it would have to come back to planning board as, as an, an apartment multifamily. And if any commercial was added, it would have to be come back to the planning board. And at that time, it would be appropriate to ask for screening. So I think that would take care of that, that concern at that time. So my question is about the unilateral um, line because his property is really oddly shaped. Yep. So it would just follow the boundary of his property right. line? It's similar to um, if you look at the, um, where the House, House of Hope Church is now, we kind of did that jagged line as well. That kind of okay, doesn't, yeah. as long as it abuts the zone, that's, you know, that's not. That was my understanding too. But I see you must be lot 91, which is right behind it, which is a very long, I mean, you're, yeah. Any questions from the board? One thing I think we need to look at in the future is how far are we willing to extend the village overlay? Yeah. 
because you really are getting into residential. Because now are we going to let it allow it to go all the way up Sullivan to, you know. It, or all the way up Rochester. All the way up Rochester to like Hubbard Road, you know, something that we'll just have to like look into. Yeah. And decide what would be our buffer yeah. or. We could do that and then we could also send in a recommendation on future requests once we have an idea of what our upper limit is. And that's something we can also do, we can discuss for our, during our comprehensive planning efforts. Yeah, yeah, that would, that's a good idea. Would that be something that would be voted on also, town vote? Yep, I think that would be, that'd be part of the comprehensive plan. Okay. Okay, so the motion would be for the approval of the rezoning request for 20 Rochester Street. And can I, I, I will make the motions. So okay, talk we have a motion. It. Or a second. And we have a second, discussion. Um, I do want to clarify that this rezoning request, if it gets approved to us, it gets forwarded to the selectmen, then they have to put it to ballot and the whole town has to vote on it. So just so everybody is aware of the process of that. It's not, if we approve it, because we don't have an, we don't see an issue, it goes by our rules, um, it doesn't mean that it's automatically in. There's a, there's a process and it'll be voted on in June. Right. That's a good point. This is this is essentially kind of like when we're discussing the land use ordinance amendments tonight. This is our recommendation to the selectmen, and they can choose whether or not they want this on the ballot in June. Right. We just run it through our the rules that w that have already been voted on by the town, which were it has to abut the village overlay district already. And that's the only rule I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it follows that rule. I mean, as far I as I can say. Public comment, but can I ask one question? If you could come to the podium, please. I just, it's just if you could just wait till you come to the podium. I, I was just curious, if you do extend uh, to the, commer the commercial industrial to his property, um, does that open the door for the next door neighbor to say, and so what happens to me? Are you abutting him? Yes. Yeah. So she's, I'm gonna show so, you. So yes. That does, and that's that's why we were. That's why we just said we have to say where are our limitations, where are our limits of this village overlay going to be. We don't want it expanding yeah. all the way out of town. Because I mean, I can see that happening because the jazz boxing is next door to Mr. Cotton, and now he knows that that's commercial. Well, let's make that commercial, and next thing you know, the next door neighbor wants to be commercial, and I'm surrounded by right. people. That's, who, yeah, that's why we said that. That's yeah, why yeah, we're going to. No, we're going to. Yeah. We, we that have bothers to, me. It bothers right you. Know, it might bother us too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second for yeah. the rezoning request of 20 Rochester Street. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's 5 0. All right, thank you. All right. Don't, you don't feel have to feel compelled to spend the rest of the meeting. I know some people feel like they're rude if they get up and walk out, but <laughs> you're more than welcome to leave if you'd like. We have a long meeting tonight. Feel well, free to come, come back in any time. Okay. I will. I'll come visit you. You'll know my first name. Right, <laughs> Next on the agenda is conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront and adult use marijuana production facility, 569 Portland Street, map R72, lot 9-1. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is Straight Fire Farms. I'll turn it over to James. Thank you. Um, so since the last um, meeting we had, the applicant has submitted an order control plan that uh, an order control plan, a revised site plan, and revised narrative. The order control plan includes a negative air machine and carbon filtration, which to me that's that's the pretty much the state of the art um, in terms of order control. The plan has a documentation component that will help the planning department with compliance if, if enforcement action is ever required. So it's a document that um, I think will it's a solid document that will help us with order control issues. Uh, the revised site plan now shows the internal layout of the building, a locked dumpster location, and now there's one uh, handicapped parking space on the site plan. The parking plan has been updated to reflect the zoning requirements, going from 33 spaces to 40. The applicant indicated there would be little wastewater, and as a result said, there wouldn't be need for a holding tank for wastewater. So the next steps would be any remaining questions for the, for the board. Um, uh, 
I think you covered it pretty well. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right, I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Hi, I'm Paul from uh, Paul Blanc from MJS Engineering. Um, I think it's a great job of summarizing our changes. Um, so I really don't know what to add at this point. <laughs> we, we um, as we spoke about it before, we um, added the floor layout. So now that we have room one, two, three, four, and five, we've got a hallway that goes through the facility. Um, off the building, the stormwater will be handled with the rain garden in the back. Um, this will also improve the um, stormwater. Um, this, this will treat any of the rainwater coming off the roof in a portion of. Can't the, hear you. Um, you just got to point that microphone towards you. In a you. portion of the um, driveway over there. So, um, and then we'll recharge the groundwater. Um, Joe Noel is going to design the new system that was located back here. He's done test pits. Um, so he'll have that done before the CO is it issued. Okay. Questions from the board? Um, have you looked at the abutting properties to make sure there aren't any wells, um, other people's wells near the proposed septic? Yes, of course. That Joe Noel. The, the closest well that is actually on our. I saw, yeah, I yeah. just didn't see any and then he, anybody yeah. else, so I wanted to make sure yep. that was looked at. Questions? No. <coughs> Mike? David? No. <coughs> All right, so this application we did not vote complete because we needed some more information. So the next steps would be voting on determining if the application is complete and then scheduling a site walk and then a public hearing. So if you, if anybody feels that the application is complete now with the information that we requested, you can make a motion. Can I ask one more question? Of course. Um, rain garden, do you have like a design for an actual rain garden or is it just that little blob on there? I would like to see like what the actual rain garden consists of. Um, in terms of the biofilter yeah. that's associated with it, the 18-inch filtration. Yes. Yeah. So you'd like a, a detail on that? I, I would like to see something rather than just write the words rain garden on a circle. It's been great. Okay. okay. That's all. You just get like a cross section through? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Of what it's a full like. cross section. Um, yeah. I didn't know that was part of the requirement of the. Well, the LID requirement is was. Met by saying that it's gonna, there's gonna be a rain garden, but I know some people use the term rain garden, and I mean they just put some plants around a ditch, and so we would just want to make sure it, it is an actual rain garden. Oh. That's all. <laughs> that's unfortunate. You never know. <laughs> Other than that, I would like to vote the application complete. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Seconded. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay, the application is complete. So. Um, what do you think about Thursday the 20th? That's our next meeting a for site a site walk at uh, sun setting at 5 now, so um, 4.30. Does that work? That works for me. Um, yep. Okay. Four, 4.30? Okay. So Thursday the 20th at 4.30, followed by a public hearing at 6.30? Okay. Got it. Five six nine Portland Street, correct? Yep. Yes. All right. We'll see you in two Thursdays on site. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Next on the agenda is um, this is kind of left over from last week or two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, review and approval of findings of fact for Trican Alternatives, Adult Use Marijuana, 513 Portland Street in the RCI zone. This just was not, this application has been approved, but the um, approval of the findings of facts were not completed because we didn't have this, so. Yep, and from, from now on we'll have the, uh, we'll have the findings of facts pretty much ready to go during the public hearing and then can pretty much approve it and then just have to add whatever was said during the public hearing Perfect. afterwards. Yep. It's like we've been asking for it for years. It's like the clock. <laughs> Just like the clock. <laughs> did, did everybody have an opportunity to review the findings of facts? I mean, yeah, the findings of facts. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the motion will be for the approval of findings of facts for 513 Portland Street. Hi guys. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I'll do the motion to approve the findings of fact. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. And a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, the findings, oh, uh, no. And abstain? Okay, so that's four yes and one abstaining. And here's your signed copy, James. Great, it's thank you request. very much. Oh, you can stick it right in your, you can leave it in your thing. He'll pick it's it up. That's true. I already got, yeah, yeah, I already got right schooled on this. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it. Whatever's easier for you. <laughs> Moving on to new business, conditional use application, adult use marijuana storefront, 60 Route 236, map R57, lot 55. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Silver Therapeutics. James. I have part of Lee J's memo, and he describes the overview. And um, the, the, se the second part was uh, remarks, uh, request for supplemental information. And since then, the applicant has submitted the materials. Um, so Lee J recommends that the application is complete. Um, but to go over um, the overview, the proposed project entails redevelopment of 41,163 square feet of commercial property, which is in the RCI zone. Proposed improvements include redesign of the existing building for proposed business operations, redesign of said building's entrance and driveway, formalized parking, signage, and minor landscaping. The proposed facility's hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m., seven days a week. Advancing the proposed facility design will require a conditional use permit for the town of Berwick. Since 2005, the site has been used as a mechanics garage for Pitbull Automotive LLC. The enclosed portion of the garage sits upon a concrete slab that is approximately 2,969 square feet. The garage itself is 1,467 square feet. All right, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Hi, I'm Josh Silver. Um, from Silver Therapeutics. I'm here with our engineer, Chris Smith, from Saratoga Associates, and my business partner, um, Adam Carfano. Um, so uh, thanks for having us. We're here in support of this application. I just wanted to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about our team before I flip it over to Chris to tell you about the project. So um, Silver Therapeutics uh, main is, consists of really two partners. Um, one is Silver Therapeutics Inc., a Massachusetts corporation, which I formed um, in uh, 2017, and we're operating uh, a marijuana dispensary under their adult use laws in the town of Williamstown, Massachusetts. Uh, we've got our second uh, dispensary scheduled to open sometime in March in the town of Orange. So um, we've been operational in Williamstown since uh, last April. Um, Williamstown is, you know, a small town and in the Berkshire Mountains. It's uh, not too dissimilar from Berwick in, in that regards. And we feel like um, in working with the community in, um, in Williamstown and traveling through Berwick, and in fact, my, our, my other partner who's not here lived for a while on School Street in, in Berwick for a long time. And, and he thought it would be a good fit and that we were well suited to, to bring our business model up here. Um, so that's, uh, that's really how we ended up here. Um, the other um, piece that, that is in Massachusetts but is here is Adam. Adam is the main resident. He lives up in Portland. Um, he owns a uh, business uh, on 4th Street in downtown Portland. Um, so those are you know, the collective members of, uh, of our business. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll flip it over to Chris and let, you explain, let him explain what we're okay. trying to do here. So uh, again, my name is Chris Smith. I work with Saratoga Associates. And before you start, just flip that microphone closer to you. Sure. Yeah, because I know you're going to go over to the... So we, pu we put the site plan and the application together. Um, did a, he does a good job uh, describing everything. So... Um, How much did he pay you for a say that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, all you guys tonight. <laughs> really wow. Everybody tonight. We are proposing a small, a small addition on the back. It's 300 square feet, which is less than 25 percent of the total floor area. Uh, this is the parking lot. It's 12 spots with a handicapped parking space here. We're proposing pervious pavement throughout, so that would handle any of the inf the, the uh, storm water. Um, we're actually decreasing the amount of impervious area. It is gravel right now, but um, you know it's very packed and it's hard packed in there. So 
This will actually improve the conditions here, and then we'll put some infiltration trenches to take the, the water off the roof. We're, we're proposing to put some fencing along the, uh, the, just along the setback lines on both sides to block any of the headlights from the neighbors, and then include some plantings to kind of dress the area up. Um, Really, that's that's about it. You know, it's like I say, and right now it's just a very it's a gravel lot and it's very indescript building, and we're we're really focusing on the site and improving the site. We're um, formalizing the parking lot and and bringing in some um, some plantings to dress the area up. Uh, the two storage containers that are shown on the survey, one is already gone. Uh, the other is going to be moved um, shortly. It'll be removed from the site entirely. I um, don't know what else um, to add. That's really the, the gist of it. Do you have any questions? Questions from the board. We'll start with uh, David. Uh, I'm going to hold off for a few minutes. Okay. Mike? No. Nicole, you must have questions. I have questions. <laughs> um, What's the exterior of the building going to look like? We've um, we've had a lot of weed in Berwick, and everybody's coming up with really nice designs for the outside mm -hmm. of their building. And this one could certainly use some dressing up. So, do you have uh, an example to show us? Um, not at this time. We haven't really. We we did a floor plan as part of the supplemental information. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, we haven't really designed the exterior of the building. Okay. We would, yeah, it'll be more like a store. I mean, it's like a retail operation. So I think, um, but, uh, but we don't have a design at this Take time. a look at Paper Birches. Is, no, what's the name of that business? Kind, kind Farms. Kind Farms. Yeah. Why can't I remember that? Well, that's a nice looking building right there. Paper Birch is the owner. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I th note. think that is my only question right this minute. Well, I can say with the competition in this town, they're gonna they're gonna have to do something fairly nice, yeah. To, yeah. To keep the. So is the, the fence is is it going the whole length of the? No, wall? no, it's just uh, it's just this distance here. Okay. Here. Did you talk about you? There's uh, drainage ditches to help improve some of the stormwater capture. Yeah, well, we're, we're taking the roof water and we'll put it into infiltration trenches. Yep. I mean, that's not really a green, but it, it is a green measure, I would say, but it, it is very standard detail for us. Um, we're landscape architects, architects. The actual the green infrastructure really is that imper or pervious right. pavement. I think we're, we're a big fan of impervious pavement. Pervious pavement. Pervious pavement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've we've used it successfully a few different um, places. Um, yeah, it stands up well, and it, it really, uh, you know, New York's where I I work most of the time. They're very strict with stormwater. How about some of the uh, lighting? Uh, we're showing we're showing we're gonna we're showing some lighting along the parking lot here, and then there'll pr probably be a lighting at the door. It's all LED lighting with cutoff fixtures to to uh, you know to comply with um, dark sky um, compliant dark sky. yeah so they'll you're just gonna have one light on the building um, at this time that's the thought yes and the lighting in the parking lot how about light is there gonna be any lighting at the uh, at the cutout into 236 I'm sorry I don't understand. At, at the end of the driveway out here, there's yeah, there's there's a light here, and then there's there's a light here, here, here. And here. But on 236, there's not going to be any. Is there no, going to be a sign? No. I mean, our our setback, our right of way is right here. Okay. Signage. Yeah, we haven't designed anything, but I think I think we. Uh, I think it was a 25 square foot sign, I think is what the application says. I could look it up, but um, there will be sign a sign along the road, yes. Is that going to be lighted? Um, that would probably be, that'd be nice, yeah. I mean, you're plan on being open until 8 p.m., so I'd imagine that it would be lighted. Necessary. Yeah. Can I just confirm that the, the um, 
fencing along the sides is four foot high. Is that what I'm reading in the plans? Um, that's what I'm seeing on um, yeah, the 60, really abutting 66. You're talking about this? On 66, I'm seeing that it's listed as a four foot high okay. so, um, fence. So that's what it is. It really is there to just block the, it's really for the headlights. There's also landscaping along those lines okay. to block any views to the property from the neighbors. So I guess I would like to see um, at the next go around an exterior elevation with the lighting indicated on it. Okay. Because I think at the next go round is when we're going to have abutters coming, and they're going to want to see that too. I mean, this is a, although it's a commercial area, it's a residential area. You've got houses all around. You've got a school a half mile away. Um, mm -hmm. If you would like the town to really uh, appreciate what you're doing, go a little bit above and beyond with that stuff. Okay. Another piece. They did. They did submit a, a surveyor's report that Saw they're that. a thousand feet. Oh no, I did. I did see that. Yeah, but just I'm just saying that, like, people are going to be driving by there, dropping their kids off for school, and people yep. live right there and across the street. Um, I had one other thing to say, and now I forgot it. So it could have been very have important. Have we seen an odor control plan yet? It's, I, I yeah, did we, see odor. We yeah, submitted as the, the, in the supplement. It's in yeah, the supplement. it is. In okay. There. So yep. we do. That. Okay. Well, tonight we're just looking at seeing whether or not the, the application is yeah, complete and if we want any other the applicant yeah. to bring in any additional information. So we already have a couple. Yep. Further questions from the board? I think an example of a sign, at least, or, or examples of signs at your other um, sure. facilities would be good also. Again, this is, although it's commercial, there's a lot of residences there. And yeah, no, your point's well taken. Okay. Um, so yeah, okay, design. that'd be awesome. Other than that, I mean, I think the app the application is complete. I think I see all the. Well, if it is, then you should make a motion. I move that this application is complete. The checks are all checked. A second okay. that it's complete. We have a motion and a second. Do we have further discussion on application completeness? All in favor? Okay, so the application has been voted complete. So the next thing to do um, would be to uh, schedule a um, public hearing and a site walk. I wouldn't want to do it on the um, 20th. It would have to be in March. It would have to be in March. March, March 5th. March 5th, site walk. <coughs> 5 o'clock. Can we push it out a half hour? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock on March 5th. Does that work for you? All right, March 5th at 5 o'clock, we'll meet at your place. 60 okay. Route 236. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda. Y'all are going to want to leave for this. <laughs> this is the real boring part. <laughs> Next on the agenda is land use ordinance amendments. And we'll turn it over to James. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. James is so friendly. Bye. <laughs> like a little kid. Uh, just, just one note. I've, I've put in and taken out industrial hemp several times. Industrial hemp has a lot of medical properties. Um, however, it's very similar to pot, uh, regular marijuana with THC. And I think at this point, we're just trying to let things kind of cool down a little bit, marijuana-wise. So I think I'd just, come November, we'll, we'll revisit it. That's my suggestion, at least. Uh, to go through oh. the amendments, so starting at number one, that's a note in there to include exemption of density requirements. That's the intent of the Village Overlay District. Right. Lee J recommended writing that, having that language in there. Okay. Number two is just removing the section of timber harvesting. Why is that? 
By doing that, we become consistent with the state of Maine, and then it's actually the state of Maine that enforces it, the timber harvesting in shoreland zoning. So by getting rid of it, the state will enforce it. But other than that, our code enforcement officer will have to enforce it because it's not consistent with state of law. More, state it, of were law. we more strict than the state or are we less it's, strict than the state? I mean, we can't be less strict, right? It's, I think it's just we have different requirements that were inconsistent. I mean, the state one obviously trumps ours if it's, if it's more restrictive. Right, and by, and by removing it, we're effectively adopting the state of Maine timber harvesting laws. In so for instance, the state of Maine will enforce selective cutting of no more than 40% of the total volume of trees four inches or more in diameter and measured at four and a half feet above ground level at any time in any 10 year period is permitted? That would be on them to. Okay. Is that in their regulations though? Uh, I have it. I have an email discussion of they reached out to us saying the state reached out to us yeah and we're like what are you guys doing they're like <laughs> you either they send it to all communities they're like you can either keep it the way it is can you send that to yeah us? can you share that because i just want to see the difference. sure 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 i'll send you the um, email thread Thanks. i mean if it's redundant then it's redundant and especially if the state laws are going to change and we're out you know yeah. What about the owner-occupied apart apartment to accessory dwelling unit? So our owner-occupied apartments essentially is um, accessory dwelling units. It's just in text that is very confusing to follow. It's been stuff that it's taken a while for us in the <sighs> planning department to really interpret. It's very dense language. Um, and the the language here is is taken from another community and Lee Jay's look look through the, has looked through this as well basically it just may it simplifies the language I liked the original language I think that seemed more simple to me <laughs> but okay it means the same thing yeah it's the same it's the, the same thing following standards okay let's look at the standards primary residence should be defined more than six months per year Yeah, you can take a, I mean, you. Yeah, I think I want to look at that a little bit. Compare it to deeper. the owner occupied apartment, because I, it's, this is, I think this is similar. Yeah, I don't like the words owner occupied apartment because it doesn't make sense. No, it's confusing. The way it was written. It's confusing. Yeah, it almost seems like you have a house, you add an apartment to it, but you are the owner of the house, but occupying the apartment. I mean, exactly. I get that part is confusing. All right. We'll exactly. Look, that, we'll look that, at that further. And that's a, that was a big hang up. Yeah. And how about this access to lots? This is what we discussed three weeks ago. Yeah. So the access to lots, it provides a step in between. So instead of going from two dwelling units with gravel to all of a sudden three is paving, there's now an intermediate step with three and four, which they have to meet all of the all the town standards except for paving. So if you want three units on a, on a dirt road or four units on a dirt road, you have to build it to complete town standards, the crowning, the width, and the pack compacting. And that, that has to be paid for by the applicant and the town will hire a, an engineer to make sure that it's built to that standard. And who's going to Here's my, and just as a real estate agent, first of all, for financing, they just don't like these private roads. Like banks financing don't like these private roads. Um, who's going to assure that it's going to be maintained properly? Where's the money gonna come from to maintain it? Because when the fourth house, two miles down a dirt road, has a fire and the fire department can't get out there. I mean, I can think of, oh, I wish I could think of the name of the, Jewel Lane right now. If there's a fire at the end of that road, and there's a bunch of there's a bunch of houses on that, the fire truck is not. There has been one, and the fire trucks could, I don't think could get there. There was a fire down there. I mean, that's my concern with adding more of these dwelling units because what's going to happen is R3, where now we've said that you can't have 
that you have to have contiguous roads if the town's going to maintain them. Now people are going to start stubbing in these little dirt roads and throwing up a bunch of houses on it. I am not in favor of this, that's all. Well, the, the, town, the town standard isn't a low, it isn't, it's not like you go from a two dwelling unit standard, the three dwelling unit standard is pretty, it's a pretty high bar. Okay. Still. Yeah. So, I mean, I, let's sit down and look at the. I would just like to see them then put some money in some kind of, uh, or put up a bond. There, there has to be something because the roads are good for a certain number of years and you get a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people living on them and driving and driving and driving. And you know what happens? I mean, they, yeah, they get, need to be consistently graded yeah. very quickly. People don't have the money to, to upgrade them. Our taxes keep going up. Or dare I say, there has to be a homeowners association. I mean, there. Yeah. I, I would like to see some some standard to well, put in there. I mean, there I thought of there needs to be some legally bind, binding road maintenance agreement, but at the same time, if they all walk on that road road maintenance agreement, it's, because, it's still a civil issue. That's why you bond it. I mean, uh, how yeah. else can you how else can you guarantee it? You know. And why I not just pave the road? Because it's uh, about a hundred and fifty dollars a lineal foot. I understand. I mean, and that's why. So they don't. It's what it's going to do if you do this. It's going to develop R three, which is what we don't want to do. That was my. This is doing. This is doing the opposite of what we as a planning board have, and you as do. a planner have taught us on how to plan a town. This is the opposite of that. Yeah. So. And this, see, and, and I, I brought this up last time. I know that we, we talked about Mr. Cotton who came in here tonight and he wanted to include his property into the village overlay. But this is a, a, a plan, this is, a, this is a, a request, a land use change for, to, to benefit one person that affects the whole entire town, per, in essence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he's emblematic of a lot of different <laughs> things with private roads. Um, I, I'm f fine with uh, holding off on it because that was the same. I mean, I, I brought up that point up last time. And you and Jennifer both said that you wanted to take a little step back because you were still trying to get all the look at the, in, it, look at all the private roads too, right? Yeah. Uh, the thought. I mean, the, the addition of one or two dwelling units to a road that's already existing is kind of less of an impact. But you're, I mean, to your point. If people now can get four, um, but I I would like us to really nail down on I th I think the three and four dwelling unit standard as it's proposed is like I said is pretty it's pretty expensive. You're just saving on the paving costs. Mm -hmm. What's so, the I mean what's the driving force behind changing this? Uh, there's a lot of private roads that have. Two houses on houses it. Houses on it, and they want to put more houses on it. It's just more development of R3 zone. That's exactly what it is, which is <coughs> counterintuitive. Which is counter to what every person has voted on, what all of our surveys say, what the the town, how to plan a town, how to how to make sure that people are downtown. It's the opposite of exactly right. what we're trying to accomplish. Like our our mechanism for controlling growth is based off the road standard. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we just like limit the growth, find a way to limit the growth a different way? Because we're also encouraging people to pave. Encourage them to pave then because it's safe, because then it's a safer road. If Jewel Lane was paved, it would be a lot safer than it is right now. It's a very dangerous road if you need to get emergency equipment there's down there. Jewel Lane, there's a couple more that have just been in existence for... I, I understand, you know, and that's what's going to happen to these roads, too. I'd like to figure out a way to um, encourage those roads to be brought up to a standard. Yeah, you know I mean? I, if we bond them and then make them. I mean that's this is exactly the this is exactly the argument. Yeah, I'm not I am not in favor of that. Yeah, I would I would agree. I mean you're you're creating a you're going to start creating longer gravel mm -hmm. roads. Yeah, or maybe or or then right now that, right the now it's a short them. gravel road with yeah. two houses on it. Yeah, fire department needs to get down there. It's probably not that big of a deal. You start stretching that out, like Nicole said, the further and further you go out, the harder and harder it gets for, you know, 
emergency and, services to yeah. get out there. And somebody dies out there, and then what are they going to do? Oh, well, the planning board approved this. But I mean, it, but it's true. I don't know. I just had a major catastrophic fire in my in my family, and I am not screwing around with this stuff. Not on that's me. That's fine. I, I mean, don't that's, want that on me. That's that's fine. This this is an ongoing trying to figure out how like there's three or, like I said there's three or four roads like Jewel that are probably da just dangerous at this point. So how do we encourage them to how do we get them to fix that? And you have to encourage you have to have some incentive or something or maybe we just mandate it. I don't know. I don't, I don't uh, know. I don't know. Point. You can't get water out of a rock. That's why I would say bond them. This way you can get water out of a rock. But this is That's a good. A separate, this is a good discussion. Thing. Yeah, this is yeah. a good discussion to have, though. And this is something we can continue through our conference. Or plan. even, or even limit the length of the dirt road, then, so you don't have a mile long. I mean, I, I don't know well, how else to look at it. But. I mean, I'm cool with. Uh, <laughs> That's an interesting <laughs> approach. I'm okay with us kind of tabling this section and we can we can let's make, table this section do we have and, the consensus of the board to table this yes, yes. yes. okay let's, let's at least we can discuss it and then maybe pick it back up in november once we have some other way huh. in to yeah. try to be interesting to see how other towns do it yeah and also i one. mean i'm sure people will come in and yell at us now which is great i would like to hear the, the other places in our three pretty big too yeah yeah so that could mean the next lot up the house, if, it's on the far side, if you talk, you gotta talk on the mic. Yeah, so the lady in there is gonna yell at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next next one is uh, eleven. I wanted to. I know, Dave. You, we, we had a discussion about the reducing the setback in RCI, and I don't know if the sediments changed because what Lee J's point was is you bring buildings closer to the front setback that will reduce reduce the speeds or reduce the feeling of it being. A highway. Mm. So reducing the setback in RCI to I had initially at 35 feet to 40 feet, and I think What's that right now 50? 50. 50. And I think reducing it, the whole genesis of this is reduce it, and you allow for a little bit more development because RCI is hamstrung by the um, railroad. The lots are there's a railroad mm. and there's a sea. Yeah, I thought about it and I drove. I, don't, I, like to, I like to drive up and down Route 4 looking at things. I don't know. It's my favorite. It's, it's become my favorite part of town, really, because I see so much stuff that we could do out there, that the town could do out there with business. And I, I do agree with that now, yeah, moving, you know, moving the frontage. Yeah, I think that's, I think that, that'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be good. Okay, that's that. Um, so number nine is just erasing a st standard shouldn't be embedded in definitions, but on top of that, this definition of parking space is inconsistent with our standard later on in our parking space. Yeah, you're space. right. It actually shows the dimensions. Yeah. How did that we does not equal 200 yeah. feet, How did right? we Isn't miss it, that? Is it 180 that our standard equals, actually? I just know it's not. It's not 200, correct, yeah. yeah. How did we miss that? On the back We've discussed it before. We just never did anything on the it. On the back page is a subdivision amendment. And all that is is the state of Maine changed their their law on mylars going right. to twenty mm -hmm. pound paper. So that's all that is. Um, then, and the submissions is the same, right? Correct. All of that, all the subdivision stuff is yep. has to do with paper. Yeah. Okay. Couple things going back to four and five is renaming. Low impact industrial, the low impact manufacturing, because it's really what we're talking about is manufacturing, and then getting rid of industrial and commercial industrial, since there are no industrial uses allowed. I think it's like I was trying to explain CI today, and I'm like, it's commercial industrial, but the, it's actually not industrial, so it's just kind of confusing. So the proposal is renaming it to village commercial. And that's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, Seven point number six, seven point six is just no person shall engage in activities on a site abutting any residential use between hours of ten and seven a.m. That which yes, it, it, it over it says the decibel levels. Any activity shouldn't be above that. Number seven, the substantial expansion is just increasing that from five hundred to fifteen hundred square feet, mm -hmm. and it has that that or 25%. So if it is a substantial expansion for a small building, that's covered by the 25% kicker in there. Um, but so you're gonna see ReadyMix is gonna come in 
uh, next meeting and they're expanding a storage place of 800 square feet, it seems to me that they should just be able to go through Jen to get a permit. There's the same thing with the feed store. Right, so they still have to come get a permit and go through the process. It's just that they don't have to come to the planning board for right, conditional, for conditional use. use. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Are you uh, mineral okay. extraction should be a conditional use. There should be a, a plan to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it's a relic of the past, I think. And I believe that covers everything covers everything that I that I have for now. I know Andrew's here. We talked about um, she wants to add an, an apartment, and I I wanted to um, talk about us starting to allow three units. This, this isn't one of my proposals because I need more, more time. Um, but looking at allowing th three triplexes and quadplexes and start looking at them more as a duplex rather than a multifamily. So a multifamily is a full site plan review, mm -hmm. higher level of review that comes through the planning board. A duplex can just be built through the code enforcement officer. So thinking of triplexes at least as more of like just a permit through the code enforcement officer. The reason why I need more, more time with this is because three dwelling units is a subdivision anyways through main state law. Okay. So, so it would require site plan review. Anyway. I need, yeah, there might be exemptions if you it's th three within five years. I just need more time to, to Figure digest the subdivision law. I didn't. You'd have to come to the podium, please, and just state your name, too. Um, I'm Andrea Burns. I live at 55 School Street. Um, we're right next to the, the um, apartment police stations directly behind us. Um, we currently have the main house, and we have an attached carriage house slash barn um, and there's an apartment on the second floor that's been there since the 70s and we were before you a, a while back and got included into the village overlay so now we used to have an antique shop on the first floor of the carriage house and we want to add an additional unit and the way the current land use is it's like new construction and we're not constructing anything we're just basically remodeling you're converting a use, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah we're, and we're remodeling. We're not adding any new structures. It's all internal. Um, and like I said, the way the plan is written, it's, well, it reads like stereo instructions. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just so much of it, we were going through the list. It's like, oh, can we have a waiver for this? Because, like, so much of it doesn't apply. Like, sewer, we're tying into above ground and I already talked to Jay and he's like oh yeah you just have to f sign this form and pay us three hundred and sixty three dollars and you're you're good to go um, because Jen will Jen will inspect that um, so we're not digging up anything we're not doing anything um, with the exception of improving the parking because um, a lot of it's like dirt right now that we've had we're gonna dig it down and put in gravel and um, but we have plenty of parking um, and they said again, the way it reads, it's more for, sounds like new construction. So, yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, we'll we'll figure you'll it see, out. We'll see more of Andrea soon. Perfect. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So, go over the timeline. Uh, we'll be at the, I got to be at the select board meeting for um, licenses and stuff. So, we'll be at the select board meeting Tuesday to go out to introduce the ordinances. The public hearing, uh, we can set the public hearing for February 20th. And then uh, the, the deadline for everything is February 21st to get it to off and ready to be on the warrant. We usually pre uh, present this after we vote on it and after we have the public yeah. hearing. Yeah, um, Patty is fine, is okay with us presenting it in the form that it's in. But it might change. Right. And at that point, at that point, they would still see it and they would still have a public hearing on it and they would still, they would see the changes up to that date. Things still change anyways with the ordinances because they have to be sent off to our town attorney and they might have suggested last edits. Why can't, why can't I go to the town, why can't I go to the selectman meeting after we vote on it? Because of the timeline of things. The timeline of things is, a, is, is especially different now because... The select board meetings are on the second and fourth instead of the first and third. 
So it, it moves all the timelines up. And there's certain critical dates that have to be met. So what about the fourth, the, the fourth Tuesday in March? Is that too late? Yep. I, I got this, this plan approved. Like, um, like when she set the critical dates. So I, are, the, I, are the selectmen going to set a public hearing for When are they going to set the public hearing for this? I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's, I think it's either March or April part of their procedural thing they do all the time. But yeah, they'll have, they'll have a public hearing on all the Warren articles. All right, I'll, I'll email Patty on Monday and I'll, or tomorrow, but I know she's not in that long, but and figure out, because that just seems backwards to me. It was just, it's just done to buy us more, more time. But usually when we present it, it's like, here's our recommendations. Right. But it's not really our recommendations. Here's it's our like, recommendations. Here's, here's our pending our recommendations. <laughs> five, yeah. five zero from the board of, of, of the, the planning board. This is our recommendations. Yeah. We held a public hearing. Yeah. These are some of the comments that we got. I think it, I think it's to satisfy the, to satisfy the select board process is just ha is having the presentation, understanding that it's it can change and then they'll see it again they'll see what again they'll see the or they'll see the ordinance they'll see the ordinance as it was formally forwarded on february 21st but if they're going to hold a public hearing in april on the land use ordinance amendments why can't go the last tuesday of march it's on it's on the actual approved warrant articles is the is what the public hearing is on uh, yeah so it has to be like already approved and yeah, email Patty. <laughs> 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 that's that works. How are they going to approve stuff that's in a draft form? How can they approve that? Because, because we're that, probably going to change. Because it. that night, every time I've come yeah, for the last vote, three or so four years and I've presented night, it to right? them, they vote on it. Yeah, they can't in front vote of on me. It. Yeah. They can't vote on they a draft. They can't vote on what we. I mean, if you send this to them on Tuesday, they can't vote on this. No, we can't even. We've, vote on we've it done yet. this once before, where we've had. We we had the I think we did it presentation last before and then the public hearing. You can email, I mean you can email Patty. I'll just do that. We've uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I squared away with her on this. It was just so we could have the public hearing on the twentieth rather than the sixth. You know every year we try to be ahead of the game and we're always like we're always like up to the very last minute it's scrambling all the at the very last That's minute. Why. Well, it's like the critical dates drop, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, it happens quick. I'll learn, though. Yeah, we'll does. get it. We'll get it. We'll Patty on. runs town hall, so if she says that's what we got to do, that's, that's what we're going to do. That's what it was, is the because of the change in the select board, we got crunched by, like, two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways. Thanks, James. Yep. Uh, public comment session's open again to anybody who'd like to come forward and... Um, Discuss anything that relates to the planning board. Oh, good. good evening, uh, Jody Rogers, 420 Portland Street. Um, I did uh, receive the most recent uh, proposed language for the uh, 8.25, the adult use medical marijuana, and um, one of the proposed changes is. Um, which I appreciate is uh, existing marijuana production facility structures permitted before marijuana was defined in Berwick's land use ordinance are subject to 500 foot setbacks from schools only. So um, I'm really happy about that because as you know, my property kind of falls into this. Um, the only thing I was uh, hoping to request was that uh, the fact that this says existing structures, um, the 500 foot, I is state mandated i'm happy that you're willing to apply that to, to those of us that have been in it a while um, but what it does is by saying structures rather than sites um, moving further from 500 feet but not being a thousand feet yet seems like it's precluded here so my building right now I, I couldn't do anything any further um, closer to Route 4, but I have nine acres, and I would hope to develop some of the back area of that. And it's not an exist. it wouldn't be an existing structure, it would be new construction, but it wouldn't be a thousand feet away. So I guess my request is that the way this is written, if it said 
existing marijuana facility sites instead of structure it would enable those of us to can stay definitely no right i understand what you're saying yeah i understand what you're saying but develop to the rear which would is site almost mean the same thing no it wouldn't because the site the property the, line, the property line yeah, could be way closer line. what about yeah. if it's um something maybe if it's beyond the 500 feet so you're not getting because if the sight line is closer you don't want to we wouldn't want you to add on to the front if you could we wouldn't want you to add on closer to the school but but, but it wouldn't i wouldn't fit this if i moved any closer so i'm right but you might there might be other people you know there's other um facilities also so we want to make sure that we cover everything not just yours in particular well um if you look at the first bullet that's under this it does say that the 500 measurement is from the nearest property line of the land used for a school to mm -hmm. the nearest portion of the proposed building so um I couldn't put a proposed building right. any closer than 500 feet. Right. So that precludes me from going forward. It would preclude anyone else from getting within 500 feet. Mm -hmm. So I do think, but I mean, to your point, you could also say nothing any closer than 500 right. feet. Right, I, I mean, I would feel I, better about that just because if somebody puts up a preschool and somebody, you know, I mean, you, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, no, so I get that. I would, I'm fine with that. I just hate to be like right. limited no, no, just that to my structure. It makes sense what you're saying. It makes sense. Okay, so that's all I had. All right, thank I you. I appreciate you guys giving attention to this. Anybody else for public comment session? Okay, see nobody come forward. Close the public comment session. Any informational items from the board? No. Okay, next on the agenda is the adjournment. I uh, motion for tonight's me adjournment of tonight's meeting, February 6th. Um, I'll, I'll second. second. Oh. Second, further discussion. Actually, there is no discussion. All in favor? <laughs> Sorry, Sean. <Tom. laughs>